We just had some friends over and one of them asked, you know, what's the hottest kitchen trend right now? They're buying a new place and they might be renovating and they're curious, what should they include in their particular space? And it got me thinking, I don't particularly love kitchen trends. I don't love making videos about kitchen trends. And don't get me wrong, I've made videos in the past, you know, hottest trends of 2021 or 2022, but that is largely to appease the YouTube gods, basically. Instead, what I find far more valuable or far more interesting is to dig into our particular work. Look at what our clients are asking for. Look at what I'm putting into particular designs. And that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get into it. Now to clarify, I'm not saying that these particular items are right or wrong and that you need to include them in your specific project, your specific renovation. Just purely some evidence, some trends, and what we're seeing with my clients right now. To kick things off, I wanna talk about appliances. Now, obviously there's the standard fridge range and dishwasher, and that aspect isn't gonna change, but there are two particular trends that I've seen this year. And the first has to do with appliance sizes. It used to be more customary to work with the space and find appliances that fit accordingly. In some cases, this meant dropping the fridge width to 30 or 33 inches instead of 36 or sticking with a 30 inch range over larger 36 or 42 inch models. However, that is changing and planning for a 36 inch fridge has become the bare standard, even if it means sacrificing other areas of the kitchen. Even more, it's no longer just a standard 36 inch fridge. It might be a 48 inch side by side or separating the fridge and freezer altogether with dual 24 inch, 30 inch or even 36 inch models. The same goes for 36 inch ranges or cooktops. They are becoming more and more common. This does require the space, let alone the budget to do so. And in many cases, it means sacrificing some alternative storage or countertops in order to get that larger appliance. So I'm curious, is that something you'd be willing to give up to have that in your own space? You know, let me know down below. The second is the sheer number of appliances. I've seen a lot more clients separating their cooking appliances, and instead of a slide-in range, they are moving toward a cooktop and wall oven, or double wall ovens in many cases. It has also meant including other built-in items, like microwaves, coffee makers, warming drawers, you name it. The most interesting aspect here, though, is it isn't just the larger projects we're working on doing this. This same trend has trickled down into many of the smaller spaces as well. Next big request has to do with pull-out storage. Now, I've always been in favor of base cabinets having drawers or some sort of pull-out for easy accessibility and easy storage. I've never really understood that standard door base cabinet unless it had a very dedicated purpose. Of the pull-out storage options, the largest requests have been garbage and recycling and another one for cutting boards, baking sheets, muffin tins, that sort of thing. I grew up in a kitchen where the garbage was on the back side of the sink door and it seemed totally normal. And in fact, I still have a small garbage under the sink. Now I find dedicated cabinets for garbage and recycling becoming more and more of the norm, even in small kitchens. Under the sink always just seemed to work. And maybe it's because we're making more garbage now, I don't know. Or maybe it's just we think about it now whereas it was sort of an afterthought before. I'm not entirely sure. I will say though, if I was to sit down and designing my dream kitchen or designing a kitchen for a home that we we're gonna spend a lot of time in and not maybe rip down in the near future, I would be including a dedicated garbage and recycling cabinet. Now for us, that would largely be for recycling. They become a little more picky here and it'd be nice to have a big area where we could just tuck that out of the way instead of always having to take it outside. When it comes to baking sheets, muffin tins, extra oven racks, well, these have always been a sort of a pain to store. I can remember finding a home for them in the pullout drawer under a range or a corner cupboard somewhere leaned up against the edge or taking up a bunch of space above the fridge. Now dedicated pullout cabinets for storing these items and keeping them easily accessible almost seems to be a must have for a kitchen as long as you've got some sort of space where it can fit. At this point, I'd like to shift gears a little and focus on the more artsy or aesthetic side of kitchen design, something I don't talk about a whole lot. Now, I'm seeing a major trend and a major popular shift in two main cabinet colors this year, or cabinet tones, I should say, this year, and they aren't white. The first is some sort of natural wood tone, and the second is a navy-based tone or some variation of that. I don't particularly like calling this a trend because both of these cabinet styles or cabinet colors have been around for a long time. 
What has always been commonplace in the kitchen, it has just switched tones over the years as color preferences or tone popularity has changed. And blue, well, it's always been around in some form or another, and it's not exactly new when it comes to design. This year, though, has just felt a little different. And although white kitchens and white cabinets aren't going anywhere, in fact, you know, white is still a very common color and a very common choice among cabinet colors, the all-white kitchen is definitely starting to recede a little as more people are starting to favor some color and favor some natural wood tones within their space. What I will say, though, is you need to be careful. You need to exhibit some balance and restraint when using color and wood because too much of it can often just become overwhelming and you lose that effect that you're going for. And that is that differentiation, that two-tone, that more natural feeling space as opposed to this stark all-white kitchen. The next aesthetic change I want to talk about, which in some regards can also be functional, is altering or changing walls. Now, in this particular case, it's external walls. Now, for those of us that have renovated older houses or are embarking on our first older home renovation, know that this is just sort of a common place when tackling these projects. Often the kitchen was tucked away somewhere or walled off, and in order to bring it up into more of today's style, which is open concept and opening things up, we often have to remove an interior wall. However, this year there's been a steady increase in the number of projects where we're tackling exterior load-bearing walls. And those clients, they're willing to dedicate some of their budget in order to make some pretty major changes. And it's often with two major goals in mind. The first is to alter access into or out of the kitchen, ultimately changing the flow of the home for the better. In this particular project, we moved the garage entrance from the middle of the kitchen to the very end. Not only does this create a more natural walkway from the living room to the garage, it no longer interrupts the main working area of the kitchen. The second is to increase the amount of natural light entering the kitchen. This has been more of a common change amongst clients renovating older homes. In most cases, those older homes simply did not have big windows in the kitchen, letting in lots of natural light. In this kitchen, we added a large set of patio doors and a transom window as well as increase the size of the window behind the kitchen sink. In this particular project, the client blew up their kitchen window to the maximum size. This allowed it to almost become the focal point of the space in which we designed the rest of the kitchen around. In many cases, it's not a small allocation of budget that goes towards these elements either. In fact, it could be quite a substantial portion because it also involves changes to the facade and finishing up those exterior elements so you don't just have a unfinished house around a new window or a door. In some cases, it has meant pulling back on finishes elsewhere, or maybe narrowing the overall scope of the project to say just the kitchen, and worrying about those tangential rooms, the dining room or the living room a little later on in the renovation, as long as they're not going to be impacted by choices we make in the kitchen. However, after discussions with my clients, they all generally come to the same conclusion. Those shiny finishes, those cherries on top we add to a kitchen, like our faucets, our hardware, maybe our kitchen lighting, well, they can all be upgraded over time. The same can't necessarily be said for major structural changes or major flow changes to a house like doors and windows. Those tend to need to be done at the beginning stages of a renovation. Last but not least is small appliance storage. Now, it seems like I'm not the only one who doesn't like a cluttered countertop. Whether it is in the form of a more traditional appliance garage with the wall cabinets extending down to the countertop, or a pantry style garage that opens up to reveal more countertop space, this might actually be one of the biggest requests of this year. The most important aspect of any appliance storage is to address the doors. The goal of these storage solutions is to make them usable when the doors are open. This means thinking about how these doors are going to open and where they sit or hide when in use. This can be anything from bifold solutions to recessed doors that tuck away, or even the more traditional tambour style door that rolls up. And you know what? One more quick bonus for all you single basin sink lovers out there. It is not, no, I'm kidding. It really is the most common choice or request or need for homeowners in the renovated spaces. It doesn't matter what type of sink it is, whether it's apron, top mount, undermount, doesn't matter what the material is, whether it's stainless steel, fire clay, copper, one basin has ruled them all. Thanks a ton for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button too, so you don't miss any of our future upcoming content. We have some really big projects coming down the line. Have a great week or a great day wherever you are, but have both in fact. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.